1974 super outbreak occurred on April 3rd, 1974, and was the worst tornado outbreak to have ever occurred in recorded history, with 30 violent or F4, F5 tornadoes occurring in a span of only 12 hours. While it's not the largest tornado outbreak, with the 2011 super outbreak holding that title, it has more violent tornadoes that hit populated areas that resulted in 319 deaths and over 500 injuries. It is also the first outbreak to produce more than 100 tornadoes within 24 hours, followed by the 2011 super outbreak. In this video, we're going to be going over the 11 worst tornadoes of the outbreak in chronological order so not to confuse anyone watching. But with that being said, let's get started. DePaul Daisy Hill Tornado, State, Indiana, Rating F5. The first violent tornado of the outbreak is one that is the least known out of all of the others that will be covered in this video, but it was still deadly regardless. The tornado touched down at 3.20 p.m., which would kickstart the rest of the outbreak. The tornado traveled 65 miles in parts of rural Indiana, first striking the township of DePaul, Indiana, causing catastrophic damage in the area before hitting Morgan's Elementary School, located in northern Harrison County, Indiana. Thankfully, the children and faculty were taking shelter in interior hallways and were not injured. The same could not be said in Martinsburg, Indiana, where all but 10 homes were destroyed. The tornado then slammed into Daisy Hill, causing catastrophic damage in the town, slabbing homes at F5 intensity. It is not clear when the tornado dissipated, but the path it left behind was an apocalypse. In total, six people were killed and 86 were injured. This is part of the reason the tornado is the least known, because it mostly affected rural areas and did not kill a lot of people, but it was still a monster nevertheless. Brandenburg Tornado, State, Kentucky, Rating F5. The Brandenburg Tornado is one of the more known tornadoes due to its fierce intensity and absolute carnage it left behind. At 3.25 p.m., the tornado touched down and rapidly intensified. The tornado first hit the northern edge of Hardinsburg, Kentucky, causing F3 damage in the area before it became violent, affecting rural areas at F4 strength. Vehicles were thrown hundreds of feet, and one was swept away and sustained a total collapse of a concrete wall in the basement. After this, the tornado intensified further and tore through Brandenburg, Kentucky at F5 strength, decimating the town and slabbing numerous homes. Afterward, the tornado crossed into Indiana and produced F4 damage before dissipating, leaving behind a nightmare for those affected. Within 30 seconds, 31 people had been killed and 57 injured. The Brandenburg tornado remains the only tornado to produce F5 or EF5 damage in Kentucky, although the Mayfield tornado in 2021 came close. Hanover Madison Tornado, State, Indiana, rating F4. The Hanover Madison tornado was actually a separate tornado from the same storm that produced the DePaul tornado earlier, but it was still very violent. At around 4.19 p.m., the tornado touched down near Henryville, Indiana, and leveled many structures in Hanover and Madison. One place within these towns that saw major damage was Hanover College, which 32 out of 33 campus buildings were either damaged or destroyed. All utilities were also knocked offline. In total, the tornado killed 11 people and injured over 300. In the campus alone, over $10 million in damages occurred. The tornado was rated F4 for leveling hundreds of homes and bringing pure destruction to many of the areas that it affected. Xenia Tornado, location Ohio, rating F5. The most infamous tornado of the outbreak and one of the most infamous in recorded history, the Xenia Tornado goes down in history for its apocalyptic destruction its impressive multi-vortex structure and insane wind speeds, with some estimating it as high as 300 miles per hour, the Xenia tornado would touch down near Bellbrook, Ohio at 4.30 p.m. The tornado was originally a moderate-sized tornado before rapidly intensifying as it moved towards Xenia at 50 miles per hour. It was clear from the start that this tornado was exhibiting multi-vortex structure, which essentially means they had multiple smaller tornadoes within the main structure. This was now a much larger and much more intense tornado as it slammed into Xenia, 
Ohio at F5 intensity, first destroying several subdivisions before hitting downtown. A 15-year-old high school student named Bruce Boyd would grab his 8mm camera and start filming it as it decimated many homes. As the tornado plowed through the downtown, it did not weaken, decimating businesses, apartment buildings, churches, several schools, including Xenia High School, which took a direct hit. One particularly disturbing moment was when some students were practicing for a play in the high school and the director ordered them to seek shelter. And only seconds later, a bus tore through the auditorium and landed right where the students were practicing. Had they waited a moment longer, they would have been dead, but thankfully, they narrowly avoided this fate. A Penn Central train moving towards the town saw the monster tornado and put out a frantic warning by honking the horn before being overtaken by the tornado. The engineer operating the train did not survive. After leaving Xenia, the tornado continued to decimate community after community, with Wilberforce University suffering major damage. Afterwards, the tornado traveled another 35 miles before dissipating and leaving behind a path of not only carnage, but apocalypse and catastrophe. President Richard Nixon said as he toured the damage that this was the worst disaster he had ever seen and declared Xenia a federal disaster zone. In total, 36 people were killed in this tornado, 34 in Xenia, and over 1,100 people were injured, by far the most casualties of any tornado in this outbreak, and some of which were the people who took shelter, proper shelter, in basements as well. The tornado damage estimated at $250 million. After this, a 10-month survey directed by Dr. Ted Fujita the man credited for creating the tornado rating scale, known as the Fujita scale, now known as the Enhanced Fujita scale, was conducted. Fujita initially assigned the tornado an F6 rating due to the devastation left by the tornado, before ruling such a rating inconceivable. Louisville Tornado. Location, Kentucky. Rating, F4. The Louisville tornado was a violent tornado that came very close to entering a major city, the first of several violent tornadoes to do so. The tornado first touched down around 4.37 p.m. and immediately took aim at downtown Louisville. The tornado leveled many homes in the Louisville subdivisions before turning away from the city center and plowing through the suburbs. Dick Gilbert, a helicopter traffic reporter for WHASAM actually spotted and followed the tornado as it wrecked havoc on Louisville. A WHAS-TV cameraman also filmed the tornado as it passed just east of the Central Business District. The tornado would then go on to destroy some of the Louisville suburbs in Oldham County and would dissipate shortly after. The tornado left a 22-mile path of destruction and was rated F4 due to it leveling many homes and businesses. Gilbert, for his role of tracking the tornado via helicopter, received a special commendation by President Richard Nixon, and this would go on to be the norm for many stations to track tornadoes, particularly in Oklahoma City in 1999 and 2013. Cincinnati Sailor Park Tornado States, Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. Rating, F5. This tornado is unique to the others as it would move through three states while on its path. The tornado first touched down at 5.20 p.m. in southeastern Indiana before moving into Boone County, Kentucky, hitting Taylorsport at F4 intensity before crossing into Ohio. 
This time, the tornado reached F5 intensity as it slammed into Sailor Park, slabbing homes and businesses as it went on. The tornado weakened slightly afterward, but it still caused lots of damage as an F4 tornado in Hamilton County, Ohio, where Cincinnati is. This tornado was the most photographed of the entire event, making it infamous to those in the Cincinnati area. The tornado would eventually dissipate near White Oak, Ohio, leaving a path of chaos and catastrophe. Shockingly, despite the violent nature of this tornado, only three people were killed, but over 200 were injured, 190 of which in Hamilton County. This tornado still lives in the minds of those who live in the Cincinnati area as it caused some of the worst damage of the whole outbreak. Monticello Tornado, State, Indiana, rating F4. This tornado was infamous for its own reasons, as it had the longest damage path of any other tornado of this outbreak. The tornado first touched down at 5.50 p.m. and would travel a total of 109 miles. The tornado would strike Monticello at peak intensity, leveling the town and causing massive amounts of damage. Riddle Elementary School was badly damaged, and the tornado plowed through Tampa, Leesburg, and Atwood, decimating all three towns. The tornado began to weaken at this point, and after hitting a few more rural areas and lifting train cars, it dissipated over Oliver Lake Airfield, leaving behind $250 million in damages. The tornado killed 18 people, five of which were in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and injured almost 300. While not the strongest tornado here, it was one of the costliest, showing that even an F4 can still cause massive damage without slabbing any structures. Tanner Tornadoes, State, Alabama, rating both F5. For this section, we will actually be covering two tornadoes as they both hit the same town about 30 minutes apart from each other, making it the only time in recorded history that two F5 or EF5 tornadoes hit the same town on the same day, let alone the same hour. The first tornado touched down at 6.30 p.m. in Lawrence County, Alabama, near the township of Mount Hope, tracking towards Mount Moriah before rapidly intensifying and swept away homes and fleeing vehicles. A tornado continued and destroyed everything in its path. In one case, the destruction was so absolute that a witness reported the largest recognizable objects in the debris were red springs from a bed. The tornado would cross the Tennessee River before slamming into Tanner, with many homes completely swept away and slabbed. In one case, a bathtub was lifted and was thrown back to the ground with so much force it actually got embedded into the ground. The tornado would then hit Capshaw and Harvest before dissipating unexpectedly, leaving behind an apocalypse. Emergency crews immediately scrambled to the affected areas to assist with recovery attempts and get the injured to medical centers. Unfortunately, this was not the end of the nightmare, and while few would know of it, another catastrophic tornado was on its way to destroy what was left and hamper the rescue efforts. At 7.35 p.m., a second tornado touched down less than a mile away from the path of the first tornado and tore through the same area before slamming into Tanner, resulting in the damage caused from the first tornado becoming debris for the second. One man that was injured from his trailer in the first tornado moved to a church that was absolutely destroyed by the second, killing him. The tornado then slammed into Harvest, destroying what was left of the town, but unlike the last tornado, it kept going. The tornado destroyed a number of homes and crossed into Tennessee, destroying more homes and killing six people before dissipating in southern Tennessee. These tornadoes resulted in an apocalypse in the areas affected that would kill 45 people, 28 from the first, and 19 from the second. Over 450 people were injured, and the rescue efforts in Tanner and Harvest were further hampered by the second tornado, resulting in the Alabama National Guard having to get involved to assist in the rescue effort. Both tornadoes were rated F5, although there was some debate of the rating of the second tornado. Nevertheless, 
It resulted in hundreds of casualties and a historic response from the state of Alabama, although the National Guard soon had to help other communities affected by violent tornadoes as well. Ewan Tornado, State, Alabama, rating F5. Before writing this script, I had the opportunity to speak with a severe weather expert about the Gwin Tornado. From what he has told me, and from what you are about to witness, this was without a doubt the worst tornado of the entire outbreak, and that says a lot because of the Xenia Tornado. With Tanner and Harvest decimated by two tornadoes just the hour before, no one would expect a third F5 tornado to hit Alabama and cause further deaths and injuries. This fast-moving and violent nighttime tornado would touch down at 8.50 p.m. near the Mississippi-Alabama border and hit Monterey Trailer Park in Vernon, Alabama, resulting in major damage to the area. The tornado then became extremely violent before entering the town of Gwin. First, it hit the Gwin Mobile Home Plant, obliterating the structure and slabbing it. Downtown Gwin was hit particularly hard, with multiple areas of F5 damage found. The residential areas of Gwin were completely decimated and slabbed where the tornado's path was. According to Bill Herman, a NWS damage surveyor, the damage in a six-block area was particularly extreme, and remarked, quote, it was just like the ground had been swept clean. This was just as much of a total wipeout as you can have. Another surveyor noted that the destruction was complete and even some foundations were dislodged, and in some cases, completely swept away, showing that the tornado may have been the strongest of the outbreak after the Xenia tornado and the strongest in the Deep South during this super outbreak. The tornado moved past Gwin and struck the small community of Twin, destroying homes and businesses, although not at the scale of Gwin. The tornado then moved to a town called Delmar, resulting in whole frames of mobile homes left in trees wrapped around them. After tearing through the Bankhead National Forest, the tornado dissipated south of Basham at 10.30 p.m., traveling almost 80 miles and leaving a path of what I can only describe as absolute hell, but even that is an understatement. In total, 28 people were killed by this tornado, 23 of which in Gwin, and almost 300 were injured. Forget even apocalyptic. This is the most violent tornado I have ever heard of, and it literally took the word nightmare and added steroids to it. A lot of steroids. Not even the Greensburg tornado of 2007 completely destroyed foundations to the scale that this tornado did. This is something that completely comes out of horror movies, and it's quite honestly horrifying even imagining the scenario playing out. Not even underground, your best safe spot is even safe. Before a later analysis, it seemed like this tornado traveled over 132 miles, hitting the place that will be covered next. However, a later survey confirmed that the tornado briefly lifted before touching down again and affecting the next place that we will mention in this video. Huntsville Tornado, State, Alabama, rating F3. The tornado in question is the Huntsville Tornado. While this is the weakest tornado mentioned on this list, it was still very impactful. It is not exactly clear when the tornado touched down, as this was late in the night and was originally thought to be the tornado that had just destroyed Gwin, but the result was still the same. The tornado first affected Hartzell and then moved towards Huntsville. At this point, many people that were suffering major injuries were in Huntsville being stabilized and recovering from the day's previous events. Shortly before 11 p.m., Huntsville was hit by a high-end F3 tornado, leaving much damage to the city. Over 1,000 structures were damaged or destroyed and killed two people. After the tornado moved through Huntsville, it affected rural areas before dissipating late in the night. One noteworthy thing about this tornado is the NWS office just outside of Huntsville was closed and abandoned due to the tornado. This tornado would be the last major tornado to affect a major city during the super outbreak. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I wanted to make this since the anniversary wasn't too long ago, and I've been doing more research on this in the 2011 Super Outbreak recently. This is actually the first documentary I have made in a while. It honestly felt good doing this again, although it was not really that fun reading out that whole Gwyn tornado part. Should I do more of these? Please let me know in the comments. But with that being said, hit the subscribe button, and stay safe.